Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me, your host, Agassino Zynga. And this is episode number 467. That's 467 of the Agassino Zynga show. Hope you guys are doing well wherever you may be. It's been a while, isn't it? It's been a bloody while. Hope you're well wherever this may find you on this nice sunny afternoon. And if I mean afternoon, I mean evening, for I me, mean evening, I mean morning, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to date this. So however you're feeling, wherever you are, I hope you're good. Of course, if you're watching this via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash that like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you listen via the podcast app, I really appreciate a five-star review and a share to help spread the show and get it all out to all the important places that it needs to be. And of course, support via Patreon to access all my bonus shows are always a welcome to. You can support Patreon for as little as $1 per month on my Patreon to get access to all my bonus content at patreon.com for slash Agostino. That's patreon.com for slash A-G-O-S-T-I-N-H-O to get access to all of that malarkey. So make sure you jump on there and don't delay man look at myself in this camera like my hair is a mess in it i need a haircut badly you know what i mean badly um if ever, if anybody needs a trim it is i but again i just can't be bothered to go and get a look look at my edges look at that i got so much hair you can't even see where my hairline begins or ends in it absolute madness but anyway regardless here i am hopefully you guys are well and you've been well hydrated and well rested it's been a bit of a topsy-turvy couple of days here or a couple of yeah a couple of days maybe a week or so here in the uk obviously with the you know announcements of the delays and the lifting of the restrictions and all that jazz and the weather's just been absolutely beating our asses you know here in the uk we're not really we're not designed as a country to really handle hot weather like this especially when there's no breeze we don't really have shops that sell good chill drinks most of our transport lines with the exception of maybe the overground doesn't really have air conditioning most shops don't have air conditioning let alone the, the transport lines so you're essentially just stranded outside trying to get you know any kind of shade that you can in order to make sure that you don't melt like a candle out there so it's a bit peak it's a bit peak i'm not going to lie but you know we keep on striving we put one foot in front of the other and we just keep trucking on we just keep trucking on anyway i've got a jam-packed show for you today loads of topics to get through so let's just jump right on in grab yourself a little drink grab yourself a little munchy I've got myself a little water here infused with a little lemon. So enjoy that and let's get her in. Ah, that tastes good. That tastes good. So first things first, as you're all aware, we were meant to lift all the restrictions or most of the restrictions. Actually, yeah, that was the last restriction, actually, um, in a couple of weeks or maybe next week, actually, on the 21st. And unfortunately, that's now been pushed back to the 19th because of the new Indian variant and all this other jazz that they're sort of kind of, you know, beating us down with. And again, I would be lying if I'm saying I didn't expect it. I kind of was in the back of my head as much as I was trying to be optimistic about the return of being able to go back on the dance floor and return to nightlife, go out in nightclubs and all that jazz. I really was thinking in the back of my head, like, you know what? especially how we kind of blazed through all the other stages and all the other restrictions kind of got lifted without any sort of you know bother no real hoopla i really did feel like we're gonna really end up stumbling on the last hurdle and when everyone was talking about the indian variant and then the media and the press and the journalists went into a bit of a you know scaremongering kind of a overdrive whenever you see journalists you know writing op-eds about a variant and getting really scared about anything it's always a sign that they're kind of either being fed by government officials to leak stuff or they're purposely trying to set a narrative and what that narrative was set it was very difficult to get to a common sense approach of like no let's just analyze what's going on how many people does this variant actually affect does the vaccine still work against it you know all these sort of things weren't really looked at it was more so okay let's just panic because there's new variants come out we don't want to risk any more lives being lost obviously and because of in my own humble opinion you know i've not really into politics but regarding how terribly we dealt with covid you know the first half of the year or the first no right the first half of the year or first half of the year, yeah. first half was the end of the last year it feels like the government are going you know are being extra cautious in an effort to kind of distance themselves from any kind of blame which is really sad because you'd imagine that they'll try to do what's best for the country regardless of if it makes them look bad or it makes them look good you know regardless of it makes them look bad but instead they just want to make sure that they kind of you know ensure that no one blames them when the dust settles right when we finally get to a point where we can kind of you know have some distance and kind of review and analyze as to what actually occurred during this terrible two years or so 
and start pointing the finger they don't want to be the at the end of it right they want to be as kind of blame free as possible that's essentially what they're doing so all these delays all of these kind of reviews and this kind of using of inact you know inaccurate data to kind of make your decisions it's mostly a kind of um job safety thing right it's less so about looking after the country and making sure that they all have their cushy jobs to go to which you know you can't blame people you know we're all kind of operating within our own self-interest but you'd imagine people that work in government that they'd have a little bit more of a civic duty about them in it a little bit more that kind of ties them to that job that kind of makes them wake up in the morning and want to put in ungodly hours or whatever it may be but you know it's not the case so this is courtesy of bbc news it says Lockdown easing in England delayed until the 19th of July. 19th. It says here, the final stage of easing lockdown restrictions is eased the 9th of July. It means that most remaining curbs on social contact will continue beyond June 21st when they had been due to be lifted. So my big plan of heading up into egg and finding myself a dark corner and unloading a bag of kit directly into my nostrils is going to have to wait a few more weeks, specifically four more weeks before I can do that and who knows by four more weeks I might be completely bored I might have moved on for ketamine I might be like you know what I'm just gonna drink a flipping you know a monster any energy drink and I'm gonna spike that with maybe a couple of other bits and bobs who knows oh so annoying man I guess my ket dreams are gonna have to wait for another time it says here the limit on the guest um will be removed but venues will still have to adhere to the other rules prime minister boris johnson said that there would be a review after two weeks and he was confident that the delay would not need longer than four so there's a review after two they can change things but for the most part they are kind of briefing everybody that it's definitely going to be the four weeks that they've kind of specified the two is basically you know optimistic <sighs> However, he told Downing Street Press Conference that he would not rule out the possibility of the date to be pushed back further. Of course, I have to say that just to kind of cover their bases. I wouldn't be too angry or too triggered by that sort of thing. So relax. It says here, scientists advising the government had warned of the significant resurgence in people needing hospital treatment for COVID-19 if stage four of the easing of lockdown went ahead on June 21st. It comes amid raising cases driven by the more transmissible Delta variant, which is first identified in India. The Indian thing is so triggering when you think about the amount of days that it took for India to be placed on a red list, even though the neighboring countries, which were highly, you know, which probably had as high numbers, if not close to what India was currently at, at that time, were on the red or amber list before India was. It's just like, the closing of the borders thing has been such an interesting and bizarre thing to watch from afar, isn't it? You just, you would imagine with a conservative government, the one thing that they'd want to do would be to somehow, you know, solidify the borders, close the borders, prevent immigrants from, I don't know, whatever, all that kind of nonsense that they kind of go on about. You'd imagine they'd use COVID as a best excuse for them to kind of, you know, enact some of those changes, but they didn't want to do it. They were really hesitant to kind of, you know, close the borders, very hesitant to do all the little kind of, um, what are they called? The quarantine hotel things, all the things that kind of would have helped us, all the things that kind of seemed in that they seemed insignificant at the time would have definitely added to us combating the virus right now. We would have been in a far better place in terms of the systems and the processes set in play and just the general habits of the, you know, passengers and stuff. Because I've heard of people that were returning I've heard stories of people that are returning from to UK airports having visited like a let's say an amber country and still coming in contact with somebody that come from a red country. There was no separation when they got to the airport, it was just like a free for all. So it kind of removed the whole you know, point of having the red and amber list in the first place, right? And then the COVID, you know, quarantine hotel things as well was a mess. Like, I just don't understand. It's so odd. We have a conservative government that doesn't wanna, you know, close our borders. Or doesn't want to restrict it for a short period of time to ensure that we kind of you know get to a place that we can open things up again and now we're in a position we're having to delay things more you know whole industries are being shaken to their core people's jobs are fundamentally at risk i think at this point because like the other times that lockdowns or lifting of restrictions got kind of delayed what ends up happening is that what was it called it's like a supply chain right if you're owning a bar or whatever so you have to order stuff way ahead in time way ahead of time you have to kind of set things in motion in in the hope that they arrive at a set time so that you can get it stocked up in your bar and then ready to open up or your club or whatever. So now that we're in this position, what all those deliveries that are due to come in are going to be sitting around for another month, which might mean another month of what wastage of stuff that you probably didn't have money to pay for in the first place. 
and you were hoping maybe, hey, let me get a loan or let me lend some money or whatever you did to make it work in the hope that I'm going to make it back within that first kind of month. And now even that first month of people partying, I'm still I'm still a bit um, skeptical about this idea that it's going to be a great renaissance in club culture and stuff and going out. I think for the most part, people don't really understand or appreciate the fundamental changes that COVID and all this lockdown stuff has kind of caused people. People have changed where they live. They've changed professions. They've changed relationships, right? That It's been a whole complete 360 and or a whole complete kind of, you know, root and stem analysis of your life completely people have done during this whole entire time and if you haven't you've probably wasted the opportunity to do so right because this is the perfect time to do it because everyone's life's been basically put on hold and i think a lot of people who are kind of you know maybe a, the passing interest kind of person about going to clubs have maybe turned off it and decided to do other things with their time and even if that isn't the case i still think there might be a good let's say two to three weeks of people going out week after week after week getting absolutely plastered and like I said I'm at, you know finding dark corners and clubs to sniff whatever they want I'm sure that will happen but then after the fact I think there's going to be a real kind of leveling off and there's going to be a lot of places pretty empty so a lot of the kind of revenue generating opportunities for these clubs are usually going to be I think around the first maybe two weeks after it's opened right after the restrictions have been lifted so at this delay, it just kind of adds to the kind of malaise that people are having. We're like, you know what? I've got these other hobbies now that are filling my time. I don't mind going to restaurants and bars with my friends and eating dinner there and having a good time and hearing a pretty good, decent playlist over the speakers or I don't know, whatever. People's habits have kind of changed a little bit. So all this stuff is negatively going to be affecting the actually the actual opening up of the economy and of the nightlife economy, Pacific and hospitality and stuff. So... The damage is really, really far reaching. It continues. It says, <clears throat> Mr. Johnson said going ahead with stage four on June 21st would mean a real possibility of the virus outrunning the vaccine, leading to thousands more deaths, which could otherwise have been avoided. The delay would give the NHS a few more crucial weeks, he said, to get people like vaccinated. He said, adding that while the link between infections and hospital admissions had been weakened, it had not been severed. And again, how can we, we oh, these fucking buzzwords continue we'll move to the position every day and if after two weeks we have a conclusion that the risk has diminished then we reserve the possibility to proceed to step four and fully reopening sooner so it's still a possibility but i doubt it at a certain stage we're going to have to learn to live with the virus and manage as best as we can adding addressing mps in the commons later health secretary matt hancock said the decision not to ease restrictions next week had been made with a heavy heart but the government's four tests for easing restrictions one of which um, is that the risks are not fundamentally changed by new variants had not been met. He said that easing extra testing sorry, facilities and access to vaccines would be rolled out in more areas of the country while vaccinations will be opened up on Tuesday in England to people aged 23 and 24. So there's clearly a push to get things back up and running as soon as possible. Um, they obviously see the damage that this is going to cause for sure going forward but ugh, i don't know man like i said i'm not i'm not surprised i'm not i'll be alive i said i didn't expect it i kind of had a feeling there was going to be a, a bump at the end of the road for sure um it's just a bummer for people that work in that industry in it people that actually had have a life that's attached to clubs and going out and whatnot who have basically missed an you know, opportunity to reopen sooner and get back to their you know regular scheduled um lifestyles have missed out on opportunity obviously the owners of these places who have been kind of struggling and maybe on the last legs of getting any kind of furlough or support from the government it's going to be hard for them to i'm just hoping that when it does open even though i'm skeptical people are going to come out hoping that people do come out hoping that people do go and buy tickets they go and queue up they go and spend a lot of money at the bar because you know these places are going to need everyone's help in order to kind of get back on their feet for sure for sure for sure anyway let's move on from that one that's a bit annoying and depressing and then oh and obviously as an ad uh, ad adminium adminium ad, ad, adinium is that how you said it what's that word called anyway it doesn't matter as an add-on <laughs> one of the festivals that i've meant to go to that was going to be the first one actually which might have been if i'm not mistaken july 10th or something by labyrinth it was an open air party at this amazing manor somewhere outside of london and it was going to be a whole sort of like innovisions you know record label um, showcase with like you know arm um, back to back with Dixon, Tricks playing, Jimmy Jules and a few other people. So it's really st heavily stacked kind of lineup. And obviously you know that isn't going to occur now 
because of the of the delay in terms of reopening stuff and they made an announcement on their instagram saying the following in a lot of the delay um labyrinth open air will no longer take place on july 10th as it would need to take place with a 10 one meter social distancing rule the event will therefore be rescheduled to a later date this summer once a new date has been announced your ticket will be rolled over automatically to a new date in the event that you're unable to make the new date you'll be able to receive a full refund so that's good news because I was a bit skeptical that they were going to be able to even reschedule it because of the kind of like high ticket, you know, DJ acts they have there who are going to be in demand all across Europe. Loads of places in Europe are kind of opening up now. And, you know, I'd imagine a lot of these places are going to be, I imagine a lot of those people are going to be in demand too. So most likely if you lock in a date with somebody, they usually have other dates that they kind of work in and around them. So when you postpone an event, it can negatively affect your possibility of trying to book that person quite soon after you've kind of postponed it so you know sometimes you just people just scrap to it or cancel events outright but if you're a labyrinth i'd imagine there's a lot of money tied up in this event a lot of ticket sales on the line you don't the last thing you want to do is cancel because that's effectively giving everybody refunds which you know is kind of one of those things that can effectively tank a complete business right if you cancel an event like this and you have to issue out you know a thousand refunds all at once it's just you know th th that's something to make you bankrupt instantly so if they're able to postpone it um to a later date then i'm more than happy hopefully it's not too late in the summer because you know going to a festival or going to an event like this you know in this kind of amazing manner outside of london and then not be sunny and it'd be you know fair enough if it's not too sunny if it's as long as it's not raining that's fine but if it's kind of raining and muddy and stuff and you know you're tearing up and you're damaging all the grounds and it's just not the best or fun experience you kind of want it to be a little bit more you know summary and magical in that respect and hopefully they're able to kind of do it on a similar kind of timeline i know there's a second event they have with cause that's meant to be on august i think entirely different lineup they've kind of booked two sort of dates on there in the, on that um venue so you're hoping that it's not too late but you know i guess if they're able to do it anytime this year i'm more than happy to hold on to my ticket and go to that one um, and then, of course, to make matters even worse, if we, if that wasn't, you know, any more depressing, for some reason, even though we've been ahead in vaccinations from the rest of Europe, which is weird, isn't it, right? Because if you think about it, last year, we're in a far, we're in a far more bleak position and the rest of Europe seemed to have been OK. I remember there being a lot of parties and stuff happening in Berlin and stuff. You saw a lot of people going to open their things. That was a kind of situation Then all of a sudden it flipped and all the parts of Europe that were doing well, the Spains, the Italy's that will kind of get back on their feet, the Frances, they suddenly got hit again. And then somehow we ended up doing okay with the vaccine rollout. And then suddenly, you know, we're back to a level where we thought we were kind of going to get over the last hump with the latest restrictions being lifted on June 21st. And then, of course, it gets delayed. And then now, look at this news from courtesy of Resident Advisor. It says Berlin clubbing restrictions to loosen on Friday from June 18th. Outdoor dance events or up to 250 people will be allowed. So just when we thought we were about to kind of, you know, get over the last hurdle, um, somehow out of the blue, Berlin or Germany overall has kind of slowly but surely, even their different regions and states, the region states, whatever they're called, have, you know, decided to slowly but surely open different parts of the economy up, mostly, you know, of course, pertaining to myself, my interests, mostly in clubbing and nightlife and stuff. They've decided to do different sort of things in the different kind of principalities, I think they're called. Whereas we are just hoping and waiting that July 19th happens. It's just a mad time to be alive in it. So this is here the following. Um, Berlin club restrictions are set loose on Friday from June 18th. Outdoor dance events up to 250 people will be allowed. So long as party goers are able to present a recent negative COVID-19 vaccine test. Wear FP, FFP2 mask when not seated. Contact restrictions, however, will still remain. This means up to 10 people from five different households will be able to attend so i'm just sure what they mean by this does it mean if you get so what if you get a, what about if you're already vaccinated do you still have to get a test to prove that you're negative that would be a bit annoying in it right the whole idea of getting the vaccine would be that you have on record that you're vaccinated you don't need to keep getting tested all the time to prove that you're negative kind of defeats the purpose you would imagine um why not just you know not get vaccinated and keep testing yourself i guess obviously you run a risk of obviously getting the virus but i don't know who knows it continues here over in the neighboring um bradenburg outdoor dance events of up to 1,000 people are now allowed without restrictions that's amazing isn't it 
the federal states prime minister okay they're called states in germany the federal states prime minister dietmar woiduk is that woiduk or woiduk um announced the decision at a cabinet meeting yesterday june 15th um indoor events will require a mask and additional testing and no more than one guest per 10 square meters so if you want to dance indoors you have to do that weird thing where you stand in hula hoops remember when you know all Nina Kravitz and them a lot were doing those play graves in flipping uh, somewhere in the Middle East and they had to do those weird things where they were standing in the desert in hula hoops so either you do that on the inside or you stand outside with a thousand people just getting off your face and just having a mask on right that's the, that is a pretty easy decision to make I think it says here Berlin authorities have also decided to relax a number of other rules including mask wearing in busy outdoor areas and the lifting of midnight to 5am alcohol ban in pubs and restaurants um, check the full Berlin Zuitung. Zuitung, have you heard it? Zuitung? As of Wednesday, June 16th, Berlin's had seven day infection rate. That, you know, but, but that's interesting, isn't it? They had a ban on alcohol. It's like, it's mad to think, isn't it? As much as we're complaining here in the UK, parts of France, or maybe, yeah, parts of France still had um, curfews. I think the entirety of France was still a living, operating under a curfew. And then places in Germany were preventing people from buying alcohol from midnight to 5 a.m. And if you know anything about Berlin, you'd know that, you know, the best time to go and buy alcohol is any time between five midnight and 5 a.m. So this is a pretty gnarly development, all things considered. But again, man, what a weird twist, twisting kind of fate. Somehow we have, somehow Berlin has kind of overtaken us in terms of reopening their economy. And here we are just twiddling our farm still. This government has a lot to answer for, in it? They really do have a lot to answer for, man. They kind of messed this up like... Just, you know, they, they kind of, you remember when you watch the Olympics and there's like a um, relay race and there's one team that's kind of a one nation that shouldn't be winning, has kind of got a bit of an advantage. And then just to, as they're about to kind of reach the end, someone fumbles it, right? When they're not meant to, they weren't concentrating or they, they put their, you know, whatever happened, they kind of fumbled the baton and then they end up losing or coming, you know, outside of the middle places. This is what it sort of feels like. We were just about to cross the finishing line, just about to kind of be able to give ourselves a proper pat on the back. And then now look, absolutely stupidous. And to make it more annoying, another one courtesy of RA, UK festivals on cliff edge after lockdown delay says AIF. The Association of Independent Festivals is one of the several industry bodies once again um, urged the government to commit financial support in the past 40 hours, multiple industry bodies, including the Association of Independent Festivals, have once again urged the government to commit to financial support packages, primarily in terms of insurance scheme to protect up and coming festivals against COVID 19 cancellations. Because still, there's the, that's what I remember saying before, right? Like, most of the big events that are happening now are mostly happening because people are just putting them on and just risking it and hoping that they can make a quick buck and, you know, keep it moving. And obviously provide a space for people to just let 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 themselves let themselves go and get a bit happy and stuff but all the bigger bigger festivals that are meant to be going on they're getting cancelled or being postponed because essentially they just can't take that risk the insurance obviously isn't being approved and if they if something does happen as an outbreak they're going to be entirely liable and you know no one wants those court cases on their backs no one wants that bad press so it just isn't worth it the, the kind of the cons way out outweigh the pros in that regard um but it seems like you know this independent body is kind of pushing for the government to offer some kind of support but i just don't think that's going to happen man the uk government is basically keep telling us they keep telling us without telling us that they don't give a shit about nightlife they don't give a shit about you know hospitality and club culture in that way it's just a kind of uh what's that word called it's a sort of um it's a to it's, it's a relationship that they tolerate when it's kind of obviously lying in their pockets but when it comes to actually making changes, sweeping changes, fundamental changes that are going to, you know, positively impact the industry and people's livelihood, they don't care. They don't really care. It says here, um, quote, ultimately it's a political choice if the government doesn't support the sector with insurance at this stage, pushing festival businesses towards the cliff edge. Says Reed, we also mustn't forget those festivals that um, have already been forced to cancel or will do so as a result of the delay. They will need to swift and comprehensive financial package to help them survive until the 2022 sales cycles. So I guess the only benefit you have is if you manage to organize an event after July 20th, there's a possibility that your one will still go ahead. No, you know, no dice, no problem. But June's a pretty key month in terms of organizing parties and stuff. And 
having that date in mind. Even at the time when it was announced, people were thinking, you know what, this is a bit too conservative. They should have kind of pushed to reopen stuff sooner. But people kind of, you know, begrudgingly accepted it because at least they off they were offered something. And then for it to be kind of pulled away from you right at the last minute is just crushing. It says, yeah, in a statement published on June 15th, the Department of Digital Culture and Media and Sport, the DCMS, said it was still exploring the possibility of an insurance package before pointing to an extra 300 million of arts council funding to be announced. Great policy year of life says the portion of this funding should be ring fence for live events. This money needs to get into the industry without any more delays, he said in a statement. Parliament also expresses frustration at the government's slow approach to planning the return to live events. The results of the events research program have yet to be published despite promising early reports several weeks ago. The next pilot event, which will see 10,000 people attend, Download Festival is taking place this weekend. And then that's taking place, I think, and what's the other pilot event i think the other one might be the euro finals as well or something it continues here the government has been quick to talk up the success of the vaccine rollout but other countries are now ahead of us in putting full capacity events exactly with simple covid 19 certification processes including the netherlands belgium and the us without emergency funding the festival industry will see many more cancellations as many as five thousand, according to independent we are the fair a large-scale event and festival production company based in london has so far had four events affected by the delay these outdoor shows will either be cancelled or postponed. At this point, we are FAIR's director, Yasmin Gellet, isn't even sure how helpful insurance will be if and when it does arrive. She says, I believe that there will be, prob- there will be prohibitive, prohab- prohibitively expensive. That's what it's called. Prohibitively expensive. A cost insurance policy could cripple the organisers already lacing, already facing, sorry, facing uh, price spikes in other areas such as supply infrastructure. Shortages of toilets, cabins, yeah, exactly. All this people don't think about, man, when you're organising events. Shortages of toilets, cabins and marquees, many of which are being used by COVID-19 testing centres. I didn't even think about that. That's so true. I drive, I've driven up demand and prices up. So all those marquees, all those little tents, all those little gazebos and shelters and all those outdoor kind of things, right, are being used by COVID-19 testing centres or vaccine centres, whatever it may be, makeshift things. There's going to be a few more here in London. There's a kind of there's going to be a mass sort of like vaccination rollout at a stadium somewhere. Like they're doing a lot of things, right? And all these things need to be used by these festivals. They need to be in the festivals' hands or in their stock room, fairly sharpish, so that they can have easy access to them and roll them out when the date needs. They can't just have it. They can't just have it appear on a day. <coughs> Crazy. A supplier that worked with every other. It's quite here. It says a supplier that we've worked with every year for five years that does this deal for like 50,000 had them on hold for us. Usually, when someone wants the toilets, they come to us and they say, Oh, you can pay a deposit because someone else wants them. But I said I'd give you 24 hours because you're the first. People aren't asking that anymore. They're going back and saying, Oh, hi, we had toilets on hold for you. And they're saying, We saw them yesterday. So, there's a complete change in the approach, even. It continues here, the festivals are already paid deposits, the suppliers are taking a huge risk without insurance, there's no safety net, and the lockdown is extended again, the events have to be cancelled. The quote here said, if those events cannot go ahead, the system will collapse and we'll see many liquidations and redundancies, as well as losing some of the most talented event professionals in the world. Nick Morgan, CEO of We Are The Fair, wrote a piece in LinkedIn. The industry is on a knife edge yet again, he added, we are still not open and uncertainty is again rife. Yeah, man, it's an absolute shit show of a situation, really, isn't it? It really is a shit show of a situation. You're really hoping for the best, but the way with these guys are going on, man, it's not optimistic. It really, really isn't. Let me take a pump, actually, before I continue. <clears throat> yeah, that's my life, isn't it? That's my allergy life. You've got to love it. you got to love it. Um, what else is going on here? Let's continue. Let's keep a sip of drink. Bear with me. <sighs> oh, God. Sorry about that. It was parched. It was heat, mate. You just want to drink loads and loads of liquids. <clears throat> so it continues, continues. Another one here. It says, yeah, Dick Mantle announces full lineup for the 2021 Festival 2. Another big festivals announcing 
um, their dates going forward. Another country in the Netherlands that's kind of finally going to reopen and allow people to dance and rave before we do. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. then again, we were ahead of them too in vaccinations and somehow these European countries have finally figured it out at the last hurdle and they're now slowly but surely allowing their you know industries to slowly but surely get up and running again. So this is the following here. Dick Manus has released its full 2021 program for its flagship festival in the Netherlands, going ahead this year at the usual spot, as usual spot of the Het. Amsterdam's boss Dick Mantle 2021 looks to set to return without restrictions following an announcement that the festivals can take place in the country from June 30th. So right on the spot in it, right? Madness. Running for the August of 4th year, right? Tight, 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 tight deadlines because I imagine they're probably waiting until the last moment to get all the kind of necessary stock that they need to make it work. So very, very tight deadlines. June to August, mate. Not a lot of time to get that up and running but credit to them. Running from August the 4th to August the 8th this year, the festival can take place after a steep decline in infections race across the Netherlands, 1,000 new cases. So how come they didn't get affected by the Indian variant? And we did. Did, he, did the Indian variant kind of skip over the um, Holland before it reached us or something? <sighs> I hate this country sometimes. Um, 1,000 new um, cases were reported yesterday, June 15, falling from an average of 7,000 new cases daily at the start of May. Object Giant Swan up Sammy. Okay, we're going to read the lineup in a minute. And this, the festival Saturday lineup features live. Da, da, da. Okay, let's read the actual flyer itself. So, who have we got here? Deck Mantle. So, you got the Friday, you have AOA, AOA State live. They always kind of a great. Uh, live act to see who else do I see it I recognize David Vunk is going to be awesome to see on opening day um, you got Jane Fitz boo she can get fucked you got DJ Harvey yes I'm definitely on that one that's a nice one to see on the opening day Job Jobs um, Karen you got Lauren Halo Lee Gamble oh he's all opening night young Marco so there's a really good uh, people to see actually Face Fatal and Wrecker playing back to back it feels like Nicky Siano, legend. So you've got Nicky Siano, Faith Faith Tower, and Rekha, or Rika, Rika, if you pronounce it. Young Mar, young Marco, I'd probably see opening night. DJ Harvey, I'd definitely see. Jane Fitz, I'd throw an orange at. Um, you've got Buffy Man, AOA and State. Yeah, it's a really good lineup to see first night. Then on Saturday, you've got who do I recognize on this list? You've got Core Super. She's usually pretty sick. The, the, the interstellar funk is usually pretty deep um juliana huxtable is really good as well a lot of girls on this so far isn't it pretty cool to see that's good at least at least they mix up that man you got random man matrix man is that back to back that's going to be splendid to see back to back Oof, that's going to be one up sammy um you got willinx and if Ev i think that's jane willinx or whatever her name is right the the people from um What's that nightclub in flipping uh, Amsterdam? Is it Amsterdam? No, it's Frankfurt, isn't it? Oh, I forgot that lounge bar that they're known from, but I think that's them. So that's going to be pretty cool to see. Um, then on Sunday, you have Anton Honey, 10 hours set. That's a banger. That's a good way to end the, the, the festival. DJ EZ, you're always going to know he's going to tear it up, especially in that sort of festival. He's going to absolutely destroy um, oh, you got another one too. You got um, SPF, SPF DJ Sam Hector Oaks and MCM all playing under the moniker of Herrera Sona. That's that party they put on in it, right? I forget how to pronounce it, but um, this rave, I think they put on in Berlin. I'm pretty sure, right? Queer party they put on around in different places. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on it, but that's a pretty good lineup. Josie Rebel, of course, UK represents. She's going to do pretty well there. And the Zero, who I saw in, Ber in Berghain, she was pretty decent. Nini H, another one I've seen on Hoare, on Hua, playing on there a couple of times. Robert Hood, live is going to be awesome. Sherelle, Ski Mask and Stinny. Jesus Christ, mate. This is a solid lineup. I really... Do you know what this lineup reminds you of? This lineup reminds you of a proper club lineup. This is like a solid club lineup. There's a few big names on there, but none of the usual lazy ones like Amelie Lenz and Dax J and stuff. Like, you know... Maybe Dax Shade less so much because, you know, he's actually really good. But for the most part, the Amelia Lenz booking is just like, whenever you see her name, it's just, you know what I mean? It's like, again, you know, I mean? you know it's going to be a tired lineup. So this is an actually a really solid, solid lineup. I'm not going to lie. Um, 
I think they put out pre-sale tickets for people that registered and stuff, but they've obviously all gone. So, um, yeah, it says here, yeah, pre-registration tickets are now moving fast. Saturday is already sold out, so act fast. Of course, a festival like this, you're going to have to book all three days. There's no point going to somewhere like this without booking all of it together. It makes no sense, personally, I would think, especially considering the amount of time we've been living under lockdown, you kind of owe it yourself to go to a festival properly, which is why I'm probably considering going to Primavera for both weekends. Um, that lineup is always tough, but yeah, Dick Mental 2021, man, they absolutely smashed it. Um, a really diverse lineup. I feel like, again, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like a lot of the names here I don't recognize outside of the ones I've obviously mentioned. <clears throat> so that is a good sign. There's obviously a lot of girls on here too. That's a good sign. Um, you know, representation, all that malarkey is important just to keep it fresh. Less so about the kind of filling quotas thing, just to make it interesting. Like, again, the last, you know, no one wants to go see Adam Bayer play again. Like, we've had enough. We know what he's good. We know what he does. Fair enough. But at this kind of festival, it kind of, they kind of owe it to themselves to be a little bit more, um, Dick Mantle should be like a celebration of like, um, all your like kind of what would, you, what would you call them your hometown heroes right that's what it should be like all the best european hometown heroes should be playing at dick mantle because it feels like an international fest like a european festival right everyone from across europe comes to dick mantle for the most part from what i've seen i haven't been yet but i'm definitely planning to go to this one and people kind of you know just spaz out and they kind of celebrate you know the artists that they love obviously they follow and all that malarkey but then you also get the opportunity to find new people and obviously connect and all that good stuff um, you get to ride your bike to the venue like it's, it's it feels like a pretty sick festival in that regard so they kind of lose a bit of the you know the vava voom the vava voom. they kind of lose a little bit of the x factor when they start booking all these awakening type people you know what i mean it's like leave awakenings to awakenings and dick man should just do like again like i said <clears throat> a celebration of all your hometown heroes <clears throat> having the ability like imagine if there's a sick resident at one of your big clubs in your town or in your city in Europe, right? And he's killing it. He or she's killing it. They've got a great little label. They put on a couple of other parties. They run around the city as well. And they just represent for your city really well. Imagine seeing them on this lineup. How kind of giddy you'd be. How excited you'd be to go and see them and get to the front of the flipping booth and, you know, high five them and let them know, hey, man, I'm that kid that's always at your event every week. Look, I'm representing. I mean, like, that'd be such a vibe. I mean, that's what you want to see. But when you keep booking the Adam Bears, Emily Lenz and stuff, it's just like, God, oh, they need a crevice. You're like, come on, I know these people are good, but give me something else, please, for the love of God. So um, this is good to see. This is good to see. So hopefully um, this kind of goes ahead without a hitch and there's no like last minute delays. I hope there isn't. But yeah, the Mantle Festival 2021 lineup has been announced and it looks great. It really does. Let's move on from that one. Yeah, we've got this weird news courtesy of Blue Origin. Yeah, I, I don't mention. I think I think I've mentioned on here before. But I'm a big SpaceX fan. Um, I always kind of keep myself abreast with all the latest goings on with SpaceX and the up and coming Starship. That they've kind of, I think. I think SN15 has obviously been taken out of action because it's been used as a monument or something. But SN16, the 16th prototype of the Starship has been built or is close to being built. They're now kind of putting together the super the super heavy booster that's going to go underneath the Starship that's going to essentially propel it into orbit and then return back to Earth. And then the Starship itself is meant to kind of, you know, go... The Starship itself, no, yeah, the booster is meant to come back Earth, refuel, go back up again, refuel the Starship, and then it heads off to Mars as the plan. But obviously for the test flight, I think the super heavy and the, and the Starship is meant to go up and then the booster is meant to come back. And then the Starship spent to go do like basically a whole rotation of the Earth and then land somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, I'm pretty sure, just to kind of test and make sure it works and everything. So, you know, it's pretty amazing to see how fast they're able to iterate the different designs and get things up and running and see what works, see what doesn't work. And we see it all in real time, right? We've got all these amazing channels on YouTube. We just type in SpaceX Starship and you'll find loads of kind of, um, you know, NASA space flying with Malaki, people who are kind of, you know, um, space nerd enthusiast kind of type people who are essentially just following the progress of all these um or spacex specifically 
from afar using drones and people driving past a plant because they don't block anything that basically they could if they wanted to kind of throw up nets and protect it so you couldn't take pictures but it seems that for the most part they just tell you to keep off their grounds don't get too close and you just take as many pictures as you want and they're kind of making it open source in a in a kind of way we basically we don't see what's going on behind the scenes obviously we just see the constructions right um the big construction because you can't hide that anywhere but it's just awesome to see and obviously the other competing um independent uh space manufacturer or spacecraft manufacturer at the moment is blue origin that's helmed by jeff bezos the now what former ceo or former yes former ceo of amazon obviously founder of amazon and for some reason some nutcase have decided to uh buy the very first seat for the new shepherd cells for 28 million so i think the new shepherd's the rocket that they're going to launch up into orbit and i think the way blue origin are doing it is that they have this i think it's a test or whatnot but essentially a brood origin spaceship is meant to just fly up into orbit with its passengers obviously so they can see you know the sights and whatever it may be and then it's meant to kind of descend back and um then one part of the spaceship then kind of descends back i think and then that's one that kind of ejects a parachute and kind of lands softly on the ground or in the water or something that's how it's meant to go so it's a bit of a weird one it just goes up and basically back down again a bit strange to spend 28 million on that for a flight that's going to last what anywhere between an, uh, was it an hour or maybe two i don't know how long it's going to be but it's not long 28 million is a lot of money but hey <clears throat> if you got it why not it says here today blue origin concluded the online auction that the very first seat of the new shepherd with a winning bid of 28 million the 7600 people registered to bid from 159 countries the winning bidder will fly to space on a new shepherd's first human flight on july 20th so very soon and will join blue origin founder jeff bezos and his brother mark mark and jeff bezos are going to be on that flight too so maybe if you're wanting to do a pitch <laughs> like an elevator pitch or something you want a night uh, uh, um expert opinions or advice on your business whatever maybe investing 28 million just to get the ear or to be around these guys is maybe worth it i don't know if it is but i don't know if 28 million buys you a jeff bezos friendship maybe it does he kind of you know you're going to continually have his ear <clears throat> but that's mad isn't it it says here the winning bid amount will be a donated to Blue Origins Foundation, Club for Future, whose mission is to inspire young generation to pursue careers in STEM and to help invent the future of life in space. Here's a replay of the live auction broadcast. We don't care about that. The name of the auctioneer will be released in the weeks following the auction conclusion. Then the fourth and final crew will be announced. Stay tuned. Imagine who's got 28 million in their back pocket just to drop on a seat to go see the, you know, to see the earth from however many million of thousands of miles it is jesus christ man for a brief period of time as well that's a madness in it absolute mad one mate 28 million that's a view you're gonna see gonna see and all that malarkey but yeah big up that big up that bidder big up that bidder for sure so next on the list here we have an update courtesy of hypebeast it says here check out the 50 50 five oh colorways of the off-white and nike dunk loader 50 so obviously you're aware of virgil's relationship with nike and the success of the original nike 10 maybe one of the biggest successes in recent years when it comes to sneaker collaborations and especially when you consider how people view virgil they don't really essentially give him the props and maybe the credit that he maybe deserves as a quote-unquote designer he obviously would you know i probably i don't think he cares maybe that much but you know it's still an interesting conversation to have but you don't think he gets a prop that he does deserve in that regard but then when that collaboration was announced i do remember a lot of people thinking <clears throat> that he was gonna fuck it up there's a lot of pressure on him i'd imagine <clears throat> sorry to get that right and out of kind of nowhere or surprisingly to a lot of people especially because you know even though virgil's a supremely creative dude he never really struck me as a sneakerhead for the most part obviously you know you know being part of uh, the whole original Kanye West crew um with don c and those guys they were kind of instrumental in kind of you know rebirthing or reigniting the love for kind of jordan retros and stuff and the work that they were doing at louis vuitton at the time like you know it was a whole different era but he never really struck me as a sneakerhead still he was mostly a creative dude who had really good ideas but to be able to design great sneakers especially collaboration wise you, you maybe have to have I want to say an understanding of or an appreciation of it. I don't say that. You know, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense, really, because there's a lot of people who don't want really sneakers who do sick collaborations. Right? I just think of 
instantly um the lady from sakai um you know all of her collaborations so far yes they've kind of bled her dry but in terms of the first time you saw that ld double waffle you know what i mean it blew your mind right that's a legitimately like you know without any bias or any kind of fandom that's a legitimately good trainer so for virgil to do the same thing he kind of took some of the i won't say spirit took sort of some of the <clears throat> the energy that kanye did with the yeezys where he was able to somehow you know permeate into just current culture and you know regular people wear yeezys and stuff or copies of those type of shoes i see loads of regular people quote unquote wearing the nike 10 collaborations it kind of was one of the first big i4 sneaker collaborations that really touched a lot of people in and around street wearing sneaker head space whatever it may be called and also just everyday folk who just wanted something fresh to wear in it i know that sounds horrible to say fresh but hey bear with me so of course nike being nike <clears throat> they wanted to go back to the well and just oh my it's just a hay fever sorry about this is coughing <clears throat> So obviously, um, Nike being Nike, they went to go back to the world and just keep draining it dry. And they've done so by announcing another collaboration now with the dunk taking inspiration from the other pair of dunks that Virgil done prior to these and they've now decided to ramp it up further by doing 50 models 50 individual models of shoes with the Virgil Abloh off-white monarchy stamped somewhere along the side and some lofty explanation as to why this makes sense but <clears throat> I think when the images were originally leaked, um, Virgil wasn't too happy about some of the mock-ups. He was like, oh, the colorways are horrible. I will never design stuff like that. But then when the actual official images got leaked here, courtesy of Hypebeast, it does look quite similar to some of the mock-ups. Or if you're being fair to him, you would say maybe these colorways, especially with the chords being different contrasting colors, are more appealing than the mock-ups because i think the mock-ups a lot of them kind of took the chord color to be the colors of some of the bits some of the panels on the upper and it kind of messed it up got the wrong way around but overall they sort of you know fairly monochromatic with obviously the pops in color of being some of the tongues and obviously the um the cabling that goes around the shoe and then there's two i think really stand out colorways in this sort of like a white with a silver swoosh and the black the kind of opposing sort of black with a silver swoosh colorway going on there so they were fairly kind of close um so this is courtesy of hypebeat said since uh, first joining its forces 2017 it feels like ages ago isn't it 2017 it feels like yesterday actually um have uh, entirely reshaped the rules of the collaborations and now they're embarking on the biggest project yet a 50 pack take on the dunk low man do you do you know i think I think the 40th anniversary of Dunk's meant to come up soon, right? I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, because the Dunk think it came out. I'm going to say the Dunk, I think, originally came out 1985. I think so. Or 85, 86, 84, one of those times. So that's the case. 40th anniversary of the Dunk is meant to come up soon. And they're already rinsing this model, right? It's been bled dry, right? Scapled collaborations, brands, fucking, it's just, un, it's, it's nauseating to this point. And again, I still maintain it's one of my kind of least favorite Nike designs overall. I think it's a bit gash, especially when Air Force Ones exist. Nike's just, are, I mean, Nike dunks are a bit redundant, especially nowadays with people, with kids going, you know, going over and over and beyond to pay for flipping vintage Jordan ones. It just seems a bit, you know, dumb to have dunks even exist. I don't see people wearing them. It just feels like they're, they're just made for resellers. I, I don't know. I've, I've honestly not seen a single person wear any of the recent Nike dunk collaborations that have sold out everywhere. Apart from the skaters that basically were paid to promote them or part of the skate team of the shop or the whatever brand that decided to do a collaboration. I haven't seen anyone in regular life wearing any like what was a recent one that came out was it the what the paul rodriguez ones right have you seen anybody wear them in, in your day-to-day -day life that isn't somebody that skates or is a part of the sneaker head scene and would probably maybe get it for free i don't think of anybody so it's just like they're creating these shoes it's like they're creating these limited edition nft shoes for people that only want to resell them they don't really want to enjoy the the shoes in any way shape or form which you know again it's not my place to tell people what to do with their things but it's just like such a waste, isn't it? You can't be you can't be like Nike and talk about sustainability and then just throw out 50 dunks, right? 50, you know what I mean? And you're hoping that it will sell out. It's just like, God damn. Um, or maybe this is not a sell-out thing. Maybe this is a way of kind of empowering people and, you know, making sure they get into the hands of sneakers or whatever. I don't know. Who cares? Um, 
Though the teaser images select pairs of the outs of the outside collection have been circulated on the sneakerhead website for months, we've never gone and look at the entire collection in one place until now, at least, thanks to Nike sneakers spotlighting the 50 in its latest sneaker special slideshow. 48 of the 50 styles, including uh, included, follow a regimented routine, namely embellishing of a white and grey upper with the key Ablo design motifs like the overhanging lacing system, exposed foam tongues, and a Helvetica text print, plastic zip locks, zip ties, sorry, and fabric tabs. The main differences between each alternative models combinations of leather, suede, and canvas. A key new addition to the pass off white dunks is the marbled piece of rubber on the sh each shoe's lateral midsole that denotes its place in the 50. There's also a colorful swoosh equipped insole in each pair. So, you know, fairly standard you know, in terms of the approach and what he's trying to do. I'm sure there's a lot more to it when it comes to the release. There's probably a, a lot of kind of thought that's gone into this idea of having them all be, you know, similar kind of monoch monochromatic bases with the pops and hints of color here and there. Um, but I'm sure the standout colorways for most sneakerheads and people that want to resell shoes are going to be the ones that we see here, right? It's going to be the, these two. It's going to be these uh, black ones with the black with silver um detailing there and for sure these sort of like white ones too because the white ones look similar to the complex off-white air force ones i'm still trying to look to get a pair of that i'm going for thousands of flipping stock eggs so for sure there's a lot more to this story than meets the eye um and then if i'm not mistaken well is it if i check on here let's get rid of this I think on Virgil's page actually on Instagram, he spoke about something about, you know, this being like a bigger conversation. So for sure, there's a lot that's going to be added in the next coming weeks about, you know, what makes sense, why they're going to do this, why they're going to do that. Let's see if his Instagram, if it loads up here, it's taking a bit of a while. Please bear with me. Oh, it's loading, it's taking ages. Okay, let's reload it again. how to so okay it says yeah how to solve your how to solve 50 dunks on the internet or are you like why are all those dunks basically the same color or better yet just shut up and just tell us when they drop so he's been a bit self-aware there which is great to see but let me just quickly reload this so i can show you what he has to say bapity 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 bang come on come on come on come on yep there we go so this is the latest update we've got so far from Virgil regarding it. it says yeah, da, da, da. It says yeah. I know it's confusing. Trust the solution is less painful than the unwanted match lecture, uh, math lecture. Sorry, full idea loading. At least I warned everyone. Architecture is going left um, from here on out. One day I'm going to do a book of all these manic WhatsApp drawings. So so far we don't really. Uh, also, Jen Park, courtesy of Song Park lecture coming soon. So there's obviously a lecture to tie in with the release of the shoes. Not sure what it says here on the board. It says Nike of White collab computing prob probabilities using counting methods. So maybe there was a maybe these colorways were inputted inputted into some sort of computer programming thing and it kind of spout a preordained amount of colorways or maybe the idea is to kind of include packs of markers in them so you can color them up the way you want i don't know there's definitely more to it than me see but it's a lot of shoes in it to release um overall loads of details here about what they want to do in terms of making it um a thing and making it work there's obviously a hint maybe to the file name saving or how it looks when you know save the design the, the the design name on the desktop i think with the underscores there there's obviously the new sort of off-white logo on the insole with the hand and the face and the puffy tongue looks pretty cool um again the the, the quality on them looks really high i gotta be honest <clears throat> Considering some of the dunks I've featured on here, especially the Beijing dunks, the fragment ones that were terrible quality, these look really good. Like this new buck, this suede or whatever on the toe box look here looks really, really high quality. Like they, they didn't really skimp when it comes to doing a Virgil collab, which makes sense. All things considered, the lacing system, of course, there you see with the rope, you've got the conversation around the box and how that's meant to look, screenshots. You've got the outline of the actual black pair there that's going to be the one that's going to be everyone's going to want you've got here the logo or the tab that's meant to go on the side and the midsole of the shoe so let's see if he's got anything more he posted recently regarding that um but yeah man it's a lot of shoes a lot of shoes with not a lot of time for us to actually wear them but you know c'est la vie and then of course some stuff about some of the billboards that have gone up 
recently all around the world it feels like in terms of showing people what can be done with these shoes on a big scale and all that malarkey so let's make sure this loads up is it loading is it loading nope 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 yeah it says here definitely quick and what it all adds up in a sec everything is within architecture and off-white until i find the exact words so i don't really know what he's talking about there but hey i guess people are going to be excited by it this is obviously some sort of computer generated no a computer or well, cad design or maybe photoshop i don't know something on the computer where they've basically put together the colorway itself so let's see man let's see what i'll go on in it um <clears throat> probably not going to get a pair anyway it's going to be l's everywhere so it'll be funny to hear stories of people entering in raffles to get a pair and then actually getting zero out of 50 that's going to be a record right in one I'm, obviously I'm, I'm sure they're not going to drop all at once maybe they will but no nike they're going to want to string out this hype as long as possible get the kids excited cause fights and commotions if someone gets stabbed or shot outside of a shop that's going to be good publicity for them internally they're probably going to put that in a nice little compilation you know video you know outlining some of the co controversies that happen around the release um people won't get them the usual suspects like you know asap bari and stuff will have a pair wearing with them you know these terrible outfits and stunning on everybody people will be angry at him for getting a pair ian connor will get a pair. people will be angry about him the, his rape rape charges or rape accusations sorry will resurface again it'll be the same thing same routine yeah, people will probably jump imagine what his Virg, virgil's dms are like Oof, people asking for shit so virgil's dms will be on fire people in the comments will be trying to suck him off to try and get a pair it's gonna be an absolute mess it really is but you know in the end um it's a good thing because at the end of it at the end of the rainbow there's a black guy winning and he's able to kind of feed his family designing 50 pairs of dunks that basically all look the same so that's a win in that regard and it's also a win in terms of just you know the uh, kind of acknowledgement from nike that he did such a great job the first time around that they're wanting to do everything and anything to make sure they keep him as close as they can to them so he doesn't go off and do a brand deal with anybody else because the last thing nike need after everything that's gone on with kanye and stuff and since then with the other collaborations they've done that have been a bit you know uh that kind of flat to deceive the last thing they need is somebody has the ear and the pockets and the heart of the kids as Virgil to go somewhere else. They don't want that. They don't want Virgil to end up at Nike. They don't want Virgil to end up at Adidas to end up at Puma or whatever else. You know what I mean, they want him to stay at Nike and you know make sure that they're able to pump out um crappy shoes to kids and sell them to them effectively. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> Interesting to see how the release goes and what exactly entails about it what it makes sense why they decided to do make up of those colorways why not make them actually different colorways in terms of the uppers and not change just change the lacing system and maybe the footbeds and the tongue colors there's probably a lot of reasoning behind it we don't know what it is so far because we don't have the knowledge or the expertise or the information but i guess we will find out in due <coughs> course <clears throat> cool sorry about that the hay fever is kicking my ass kicking my ass it really is so this is courtesy of hype says a my maison maison margella rebo classics leather tabby high here as you can see gladiator sandal um i just wanted to talk about it. it's just more so in the regard of it being rebook and it being a fairly decent shoe that will actually wear um, I quite like this kind of collaboration between Margiela and Reebok where they're essentially taking the little the tabby inspired toe box and applying it onto Reebok trainers. I also like the idea that Reebok being a dead brand and you know a brand that no one really cares about, a brand that I adamantly hate um, because of just where I grew up and the connotations that it has in the, in the ends where I'm from. If you know, you know. But there's also a story behind these sort of like high tops, these well, workout high tops. I remember a time in school, secondary school specifically, where um, I was unfortunately for some reason, I don't know why it happened, but I was always like a size nine or eight and a half at most for a long period of time in school from like year seven to year nine. And as soon as I got to year nine, which is what, when you're 14 or something, suddenly my feet blew up and I just shot up to a size 10 or about that. And it was just so hard to take at the time, right? And I got weird feet where my feet are wide or fat, as some people would like to say, uh, but they're short in length. 
So that would mean some trainers you'd need to maybe size up to get the width right or whatever. So I would end up sometimes with like, and imagine when you're when you're a kid, I don't know why it is, but sometimes you end up wearing shoes two sizes too big just because you want a pair of shoes. And that's why actually, I know why. Usually just because you go to the shop with no money, you go with your parents' money, wherever it is, or they take you there to get, to get something for yourself. And then you don't want to leave empty handed. So you'd rather just take something that's even a size too big just so you can get a shoe because you told all your friends that you're going to buy something and you don't want to turn up and have to explain that you didn't have it so you just want to show it off and feel like you're one of the gang and one of the group and um you end up wearing just horrible shit in it and i remember at that time we had sports direct so i don't know if it was called sports Direct back then but that was a good spot to get stuff on sale or you go to tj maxx and stuff and get things on sale but anyway i remember at that time when my feet shot up for some reason these black high top Reebok workouts or Reebok Classic, sorry, were really, really in trend. Obviously, not the Gladiator one because I think essentially what they've done is they're just kind of these are usually Reebok Classics, but I think they've just Margella specifically cut out sections of the upper to obviously make them look more like a Gladiator shoe. But you know, for the most part, the regular shoe is just all covered up here. So for some reason, these are really popular in my school. I think there's actually a black pair here. Let's get rid of the kind of trademark Margella kind of colorway with the white paint on top of the leather. Yeah, so basically there was these, right? Just cut standard. I think there's a standard black colorway here. If I can find this, get rid of the red. There's a white one, that's pretty nice. And then the black is here. So this pair, for some reason, was really popular, obviously with the holes covered up. And everyone was wearing them in school. But they were really hard to get in men's sizes at the time because if I remember correctly, they were only sold in women's maybe the shape i don't know the time i think people got them from like a little was catalog or something right they were hard to get so people were buying them and obviously buying them on cheap because of women's sizes but obviously then you go to a certain size and as soon as i tried to get a pair i realized that's when i kind of realized how big my feet were you know you don't really realize things like that until you have to kind of navigate in the world and you know jump onto trends and stuff and i realized oh shit my feet are ginormous because I'm a size 10 or 9 and these will maybe go up to max size 7. And at the time, one of our one of the boys in our school, the kind of in-house in bully, um, Kessa, who I wonder where he is now at the moment, this guy called Kessa, he was like the, you know, the most fearsome dude back in our school. Which you think about at the time as well, he was only fearsome because he was the only guy willing to actually get into a scrap. Right, That's the only thing. Because at the time when you're a kid, you think this guy's a freak. Right? He might as well be Mike Tyson. Right? But the only reason why he was Mike Tyson, because out of everybody in our school, willing to, you know, we just wanted to like play games and hang out and try and chase after girls. He was actually willing to get into physical altercations. And that's something that would scare most kids, especially at that age. You're just kind of, you're awkward, you're clumsy, you're just getting used to your body. I don't know, you're just not at a time to try to beat people up. Obviously, there might be an occasion where if you're getting bullied, you have to stand up for yourself. But in order to fight, it takes a lot at that age to really fight and, you know, swing and stuff and punch people. And he was obviously a fighter and quite good at it at the time. And it was just so scary, right? <laughs> he used to kind of bully and intimidate people. And he had this like long standing beef and argument with this another guy in our school who was the other resident bully called Dominic, who is now really nice actually. Kind of weird how that kind of turned out. But Kessa was the guy that I remember when I, when I kind of see these shoes, I think of Kessa. I wonder where he's at at the moment, but he was kind of a real bad egg in our school. Maybe he's kind of turned into a real softy now and kind of corrected the error of his ways. But this was a real representation. <laughs> again, when I see these sort of shoes, I'm reminded of my massive boats. But again, look how things change. Now these are collaborations with Margella. They're obviously in men's sizes. They'll probably go up to a size 14. So if I want a pair, I can kind of heal myself by getting a pair but yeah crazy and absolutely crazy man but it's actually wild to think about it that margera are doing these crazy collaborations with reebok that are, i think pretty interesting and do a good job of elevating a pretty mediocre trainer but no one really cares it feels like it feels like no one really gives a shit i've seen a couple of people with the all white you know reeboks and stuff classics but overall no one seems to really give a shit about these shoes um and it's a shame too because I've, I'd imagine, <coughs> sorry, at Reebok HQ, there's a conversation around, oh, let's stop retroing these classics and try and kind of, you know, breathe new life into this brand by actually making new shoes. But they don't want to do that because they're having to compete with brands like Nike and Adidas who do nothing but release retros. A large part of Nike and Adidas's revenue, I'd imagine, um, especially in the kind of lifestyle section of stuff, is definitely from stuff that they did in the 30, 40 years ago, right? Models and stuff. 
uh, th- think of the dunk we mentioned it's like you know 30 odd years old so if you're a Reebok you're trying to compete with those brands but then you don't have the archive um, that they have you also want to innovate we don't have the designers because they're all going to the bigger brand because it's a waste of time designing a cool Reebok shoe no one's going to see it no one's going to buy it so they're going to the other brands to get more clout and get more notoriety and work around you know of course the top talent and have access to the best manufacturing processes and all this malarkey so they kind of skip in that and yeah you're just left in the lurch and you know again this collaboration is really good i think it's awesome i think it works really well especially again the the black pair that's kind of painted white in a signature sort of merger style um but unfortunately it just feels like it's not resonating people just don't seem to care as much as they probably should see that's the problem too those pictures see that picture there that looks really bad quality but then that doesn't look too shabby maybe it's because there's a flash on it but i'm sure they're they're done pretty well to a good standard and you know interesting way to kind of do a twist on the rebook i'd obviously go for this style more so than the others but yeah that's my that's my rebook classic story and why i kind of hate them to this day but i would legitimately wear these for sure i definitely definitely wear these i like these white ones the white ones look nice um let's see a date for you and i can move on gladius sendu is it good? Did I get rid of that? Yeah, that did right. Yeah, it says here was a date. The Mace Magella Reebok Classics Leather High Tabby will release in both Magella and the Reebok Online Store. Okay, that's good. And the HBX from June 18th. Um, the Bianchetto, Bianchetto, Bianchetto is priced at $650. <gasps> oh my God. No wonder they're not going to sell them. $650. No wonder I don't see people wearing them. While the other free iterations are five ninety five, so if you want the one covered in white paint, it's six fifty, and if you want the others, it's five fifty nine. Six fifty. These make these 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 guys are smoking that good stuff in it. Six fifty for Reeboks and Margellas. No, no, no. You can jog on on that one. You can jog on. I didn't know six fifty. That's wild. That is legitimately one of the most wild things I've seen. I've got to be honest. Six fifty. What can you say? What can you say? Um, I think that might be it. You know, yeah, I think that might be it. Let's jump on. Okay, it's already an hour in already. You know? So yeah, let's jump. Let's leave it for now, and then I'll kind of do the rest of the topics on the other episode. Actually, save a little bit of topics for the other one. So yeah, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Again. Next on Single Show episode number 467. If you're first time tuning in the show, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. And if, of course, you're listening via the podcasting apps and stuff, share it and all that good stuff. That would be much appreciated. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Peace.